Now is the winter of our discontent. Make glorious summer by this sun of York, and all the clouds that lowered upon our house in the deep bosom of the ocean buried. Now are our brows bound with victorious wreaths, our bruised arms hung up for monuments, our stern alarms changed to merry meetings, our dreadful marches to delightful measures, grim-visaged war that smoothed his wrinkled front. And now, instead of mounting barbed steeds to fright the souls of fearful adversaries, he capers nimbly in a lady's chamber to the lascivious pleasing of a lute. But I, that am not shaped for sportive tricks, nor made to court an amorous looking glass, I that am rudely stamped and want love's majesty to strut before a wanton ambling nymph, I that am curtailed of this fair proportion, cheated of feature by dissembling nature, deformed, unfinished, sent before my time into this breathing world, scarce half made up. And that's so lamely and unfashionable that dogs bark at me as I halt by them. <sighs> Why, in this week, I think I am a beast. I really like to pass away the time. <laughs> Unless to see my shadow in the sun and descant on mine own deformity. And therefore, since I cannot prove a lover, to entertain these fair well-spoken days, I am determined to prove a villain and hate the idle pleasures of these days. Plots have I laid, inductions dangerous, by drunken prophecies, libels, and dreams, to set my brother Clarence and the king, the one against the other. And if King Edward he is true and just, as I am subtle, false, and treacherous, this day, should Clarence closely be mewed up about a prophecy which says that G of Edward's heirs the murderer shall be. I have thoughts down to my soul. Here Clarence comes! Bravo! Good day! What means this armored guard that waits upon your grace? 